Before this video starts, I would like to say that this video is highly replayable. Yo, what's going on? It's your not Justin. And for the better part of two years, Blizzard has been going on a downward spiral in the public eye of us, the consumer. You know, in perspective, it's actually been an incredibly rough time for Blizzard. At a time when Diablo 4 was highly anticipated, we were given Cheapy the Cheapskate's game instead. And us being upset with that, we were told this. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones. Got a phone. yeah, right. Oh, it doesn't matter how you spell your <laughs> Wow, we were a bit taken for granted there, weren't we? Surely Blizzard would be smart enough to learn from this PR disaster. And surely they wouldn't take the player for granted again. <laughs> <laughs> Hearthstone player banned for supporting Hong Kong protesters during livestream. Blizzard responded to the incident by banning Blitz Chung from competing in Hearthstone tournaments for one year, effective from October 5th. He will also no longer be able to take part in the Grandmasters tournament and will lose any prize money earned during the Grandmasters season 2. Blizzard says it has also terminated the contract of the two casters. I guess freedom kinda is free at least when you protest for it. Eventually, Blitz Chung was allowed to receive his prize money. Mind you, would he have even received a dime if we wouldn't have flipped out about it? Think of a world where we don't have social media to express our opinions on. Imagine if nobody had said a word or criticized Blizzard at all. I personally don't believe that Blitz Chung would have gotten any money and he would still be banned to this day, with no talks of even considering allowing him to get what he earned. With PR nightmare after PR nightmare caused by Blizzard, in the background of all of this, Overwatch, the game that revolutionized competitive gaming entirely, was starting to lose its credibility and legitimacy as a competitive game. For what seemed like an eternity, Overwatch League was seeing the GOATS meta over and over and over again, and the chat was full of nothing but resident sleeper. Outside of professional play, we were also given the same stale metas, with no patch notes and no updates whatsoever to fix what is going on. We let characters like Brig, run a complete muck of competitive. Characters that were previously balanced for the previous meta are now destroying competitive, like Doomfist, Mei, Reaper, Moira. There's no balancing whatsoever with them currently. The balance patches come out at a very snail-like pace, and we don't even get content updates. We get Junket Signs Revenge and Lucio Ball every single year. But as of BlizzCon, all of that is subject to change now. Let's dive right into it and talk about it. I'm excited. To start things off here, we're going to start with the most negative part of this, because there is going to be a lot of positive things I have to say about this. So to just get this out of the way, Blizzard President J. Allen Brack addressed the Blitz Chung situation. Sort of. You know, uh, Blizzard had the opportunity to bring the world together in a tough Hearthstone esports moment about a month ago, and we did not. We moved too quickly in our decision making, and then, to make matters worse, we were too slow to talk with all of you. When I think about what I'm most unhappy about, there's really two things. The first one is, we didn't live up to the high standards that we really set for ourselves. And the second is, we failed in our purpose. And for that, I am sorry, and I accept accountability. Please clap. So what exactly? So this is sort of a half-assed apology, but it is acknowledgement nonetheless. And I think that acknowledgement of the situation is very important. And this isn't very direct, and I feel that it misses the mark because who exactly is he apologizing to? Me? Us? We're not the ones that he banned. He didn't take away our prize earnings for standing up for what we believe in with a completely made up and ridiculous rule of not being allowed to talk about politics. Like that's that's really ridiculous. Is he apologizing to Blitz Chung? Is he apologizing to China? By apologizing, is he going to remove the penalties from Blitz Chung and the other players that were punished? I think that actions would do a lot more than uh, these words, but that doesn't mean that words aren't important. Acknowledging this is very good, but the fact that he doesn't say Blitz Chung's name directly, the fact that he doesn't mention any of the other players, the fact that he doesn't mention that you can't have free Hong Kong beer name on Battle.net, it's all a little bit malicious in my opinion and very disingenuous. There's something just not quite right about this. It's kind of weird though because in Blizzard's written apology from the same guy, he says, if this had been the opposing viewpoint delivered in the same divisive and deliberate way, we would have felt and acted the same. I don't know, the whole spoken apology kind of seems a little bit divisive. And to all those affected, I want to say, I am sorry, and I accept accountability. I am sorry, and for that, I am sorry, sorry, and for that, I am sorry, 
Good night, girl. I'm sorry. I'll see you tomorrow. And I accept accountability. Coming in next, we have an incredibly beautiful trailer for Diablo 4. They announced Diablo 4, and obviously we had that blunder with Diablo Immortal being on the mobile and kind of just being like a cash grab kind of game that was supposed to hold people over who were fans of Diablo. And I have to actually say that this trailer really blows everything out of the water. It is really beautifully done. The game itself looks kind of sick. Definitely looking like something that Diablo fans, as well as people who might be new to the series, might be really interested in. And you know what? That's what we've been waiting! It's really exciting stuff for the Diablo fans, although it's been speculated that this game could be out as late as 2021. Still a good day to be a Diablo fan nonetheless. Which brings us to our next part of the video, the part that I'm going to know the most about because uh, I have like 10,000 hours of my life wasted on this goddamn game. Everybody is really unsure. We've seen leaks. We've seen things that were disguised as leaks that were really just fake and made in like Source Filmmaker and stuff like that. But we actually now have a confirmation that Overwatch 2 exists. And we've been given so much information about Overwatch 2 without being given any information at all. So I'm really eager to see what more we can find out until the game actually comes out and we get a full scoop of what exactly Overwatch 2 is going to be. It's really looking unsure of exactly how they're going to roll this out to us. But Overwatch 2 is looking like it is going to be an expansion of Overwatch 1. It's going to be its own standalone thing while still being the same thing. Bear with me. This sounds really confusing. On the screen right now, you are seeing Overwatch 1. This is just the core game. What Overwatch 2 will be will be a prettier, higher quality, somewhat of an expansion, if you will, of Overwatch. Apparently, the engine is going to be much better as well. Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 are separating from each other. But if you go from Overwatch 1 to Overwatch 2, you will get to keep all of your skins and everything that you've unlocked up until that point. Overwatch 2 players will be able to play multiplayer pvp with overwatch one players apparently and what we've all been waiting for we're getting a brand spanking new lore filled story mode type thing really it's kind of unsure honestly what it kind of looks like more of an expansion than a, a story based game which is a little bit unfortunate but i think that with the development of this that they focused heavily on making the co-op mode be very fun very playable and little side note for you guys i, th I find it kind of concerning very funny as well in the gameplay trailer they made sure to include text on screen that said highly replayable if somebody is making a product and they have to tell you how good it is then maybe it's not so good it's a little bit worrisome and maybe i'm just taking this really far out of context it is funny nonetheless that they would include that you guys like this video there's lots of things to like about this video so please leave a like on it this is me telling you that this video is good and not you guys deciding that it's good we have absolutely no information whatsoever on exactly how much story we're going to be given. To me, this announcement of Overwatch 2 was more of them trying to say, hey, we're trying to turn Overwatch 2 into something even better for you guys. We're going to take the thing that you love, and we're not going to take away from it anymore. Instead, we're going to add to it. In the announcement trailer, we also saw that we're getting new maps and a new game mode. New game mode's called Push, but again, with revealing a lot, they didn't reveal enough. Just by looking at this, I can't really tell you what it is, but maybe it's like Payload Race, or maybe it combines three of the game modes together, Escort, Assault, and Control. Kind of hard to say. We're being given new maps. On the screen there, you see Lucio playing hockey. I believe that takes place in Toronto. Paris has been in the game for however long it's been in the game, and they have not altered it whatsoever, so I really hope that if they do put these new maps in the game, that they listen to us. Paris alone makes Overwatch kind of unplayable. Two new characters got announced. We knew of one named Echo, but the one that you just saw on screen was Sojourn. Probably saying that wrong. Fuck it. Seriously though, look at this UI. I really love the UI in this. It's way cooler than the one that we currently have. Uh, the original UI that Overwatch had was a little bit clunky, but I honestly kind of preferred that to the one that we currently use. But this one, to me, I'm nerding out over it. Really like it a lot. With the amount that we were given, I can confidently say that these visuals are really awesome. I'm loving the new looks of all the characters. Overwatch was already a beautiful game, and they definitely found a way to make it even prettier, which is great. Now, on the topic of their co-op mode, which is supposed to be the biggest draw for Overwatch 2, I'm very much excited for this. You guys saw it on the screen there. There is leveling up that you can do, and there's items and stuff like that, and the characters have all these new abilities that you can level up to earn to apply to said characters. Unfortunately, in this trailer, all we saw was a few of the characters from the cast. We don't know exactly who we're gonna get to play, but if I had to speculate, I would say that we only saw the Overwatch heroes. Therefore, on a deeper aspect of the game and a deeper aspect of understanding the story, it's probably going to segregate Talon and the evil characters in Overwatch and give them their own perspective story modes, with the co-op included, of course, which will just give it more depth, adding more characters, adding more lore, which is good for everybody. I would be very surprised if they found a way to exclude some characters from this. I don't know if I expect every single character to be included in Overwatch 2, at least with the lore and the stories that they get. I would really like to see that be the case. I really hope it's not something that's lackluster. I don't want Overwatch 2 to be $60 for seasonal events. I hope that they really deliver to it with us and they really give us something that's worth grinding, that's worth playing, that's fun. And on that topic of grinding, this is just my personal speculation, but I really hope 
with all of my being that Overwatch 2 has some kind of economy. Why do people play these co-op games? Why do people play these co-op games like Destiny or uh, even Borderlands? These co-op looter shooter type games, they incentivize you to play because you want to show off to all your friends all the cool stuff you got for playing the game. You want to show them that you spent the time to grind to unlock the most powerful weapon, the most powerful ability, the most powerful skin, whatever, the coolest skin. A person you may have seen me play with on this channel several times, Tyler, he plays Destiny 2, he's really into it. I'm not super into it, but I do play it with him sometimes. It's always cool playing with him because he has the coolest shit. I hope that Overwatch 2 gives us a really cool incentive to just grind away and play so that way we have that same kind of feeling where it's like, all right, I played, I beat something that was really hard to beat. I had the item for it. Not everybody has this item because not everybody's put in the work that I put in. That's what I'm looking for from a game that's supposed to be co-op driven like Overwatch 2. I hope I'm not wrong, but it's really looking like everything for Overwatch 2 is being done right. We're getting a story. All of the cosmetics that we've unlocked are carrying forward. Overwatch 1 players are going to be able to play with Overwatch 2 players. The characters are going to level up from playing campaign. And it's looking like we're going to have a really huge focus on making the co-op have a lot of longevity. This was a really important damage control day for Blizzard. They missed the mark with Blitz Chung, but at least there was something to acknowledge it. And that doesn't get rid of all of the evil deeds that they've done. I do think that there's a lot more accountability that needs to be held than just saying, we're sorry. But as long as we're vocal about things not being okay and what we want and how things should be, I think that we will really push towards a better change for everybody. I would say that on the damage control scale, out of five, Blizzard's probably at like a three and a half, maybe even like a four. Two points for the Diablo 4 announcement, two points for the Overwatch 2 announcement. I award them no points for their words on Blitz Chung. But overall, this is a very good announcement and a very good day to enjoy Diablo and enjoy Overwatch. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. Let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you guys are looking forward to in Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. If you play Overwatch on the Switch, I'm sorry that you wasted your money. That's your fault. There's no way that Blizzard could be at fault for releasing Overwatch 2 immediately after releasing the stupid Switch version. Or, excuse me, announcing. You guys will get to play it for six months. But yeah, I have to say, as somebody who's very critical, as a content creator who's very critical of Overwatch, I'm looking forward to a lot of really good things from this. And I hope that all of my other friends who also create content on this game will follow suit and try to enjoy the cool things that we've been given. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.